Hello and welcome to the next video of our channel Practical Hope. In this video, we are going to discuss the solution of a system of linear equations using Gauss-Seidel method. Suppose these are the equations that we need to solve. We need to find the values of uh, x1, x2 till xn and uh, we have n equations. There are two methods to obtain solution of non-homogeneous system of linear equations. First one direct methods like Gauss elimination, Gauss Jordan, then iterative methods like Gauss Seidel, Jacobi's. In this video, we are going to focus on the Gauss Seidel method. Now it is important to note that uh, the diagonal elements or the coefficients a11, a22, a33 till ann must be dominant for iterative methods. Then only the method will converge and give a correct solution. Such a system of uh, linear equations where the diagonal elements are dominant is called a diagonal system. Next, methodology. First, we assign initial value to each unknown x1, x2 till xn. Initialization affects the number of iterations required to obtain the final solution. If we don't have better estimates, then it's uh, better to assign 0 initially. Next, first iteration. Find x1 by substituting the initial values of x2, x3 till xn in equation 1. This is equation 1. Find x2 by substituting current x1 and the initial values of x3, x4 till xn in equation 2. This is equation 2. Proceed similarly till xn is computed using nth or last equation. Then iteration 2, again find x1 by substituting x2, x3 till xn from iteration 1 in equation 1. Again find x2 by substituting current x1 and x3, x4 till xn from iteration 1 in equation 2. Proceed similarly till xn is computed using nth or the last equation. Iterations will continue till difference between successive values of uh, each unknown vary within permissible limits. Let's take an example. We need to find the values of x1, x2 and x3. We are taking the case of three variables. First initialization. Say we take initial values of x1, x2 and x3 as 0. Then iteration 1. Using these two values x2 and x3, we can find the value of uh, x1 from equation 1. So this is x1. Next, by using the value of uh, old x3 and uh, new x1, we can find the value of x2 from equation number 2. Then using new values of x1 and x2, we can find the value of x3 from equation 3. Proceeding in the similar manner, after few iterations, we'll get the values of x1, x2 and x3. So these are the final solutions. Let's uh, implement it in Scilab. First, give a suitable title, solve system of equations using Gauss-Seidel method. First, we are writing the program for three variables, CLC and clear. First, we need to define the coefficient matrix A. Then, we define vector B. Let's take the initial values of uh, x1, x2, x3 as 0 in vector x. N is the input. Enter number of iterations. We need to provide the information of a number of iterations to the program. Then we use a for loop that will run from 1 to n. First we calculate x1 from equation 1. Then we calculate x2 from equation 2. And finally we calculate x3 from third equation. Now we can display x1, x2 and x3 after ith iterations. Finally, display x. Minimize it. Execute it. We need to save it. Go to the console. It is asking for the number of iterations. Say we write 10 iterations. So, these are the final solutions. x11, x2, almost 3 and x3, 4. But uh, there is one thing that you can notice from here is that this uh, final solution we have got after six or you can say seven iterations and unnecessarily the program has been executed till 10 iterations so we need to check if the difference between the present values of uh, 
x1 or x2 or x3 is almost the same as the previous value of x1, x2 or x3, then we need to stop the iterations. Go to the programming. First, we need to save the previous values of x1, x2 and x3. So, we define x1 equal to first element of x, x2 equal to second element of x and x3 equal to third element of x. So, we have saved the previous values of x1, x2 and x3 and then we have calculated the new or updated values of x1, x2 and x3. Now, we can check if absolute value of x1 minus x bracket 1 is uh, less than 0 0.0001 and we need to write for x2 so let's uh, copy and paste change x1 to x2 and this 1 to 2 then and again paste change this to x3 and this also 3 bracket close so this is the condition and uh, if this condition is met that is the difference between all the previous values of x and the present value of x is less than 0 0.001 then we will have to break this for loop enter break and again we have to write end execute it say number of iterations 10 press enter now you can see the program has stopped after 8 iterations only because the difference between the previous and present values of uh, x of all the values of x is less than 0 0.001 you can give 10 iterations 50 iterations but it will stop after 8 iterations only now this program is for uh, 3 variables only say we increase the number of uh, variables to 5 or 10 or more then it will be very difficult to write equations for individual variables therefore we need to find a way so that we can generalize the program for any number of variables let's see the concept behind that then we'll move on to the programming say these are the set of equations and uh, these are the three equations to find x1 x2 and x3 take the case of x1 suppose uh, we write x1 like this we have added a 11 x1 and subtracted also so effectively there will be no change we can uh, rearrange the terms like this and uh, the sum of these three terms we are defining as sum 1 that is the the sum of these three terms of equation number 1 we can write x1 like this now this equation can be written in general like this you can see we can uh, calculate any variable using this general expression say we want to calculate x2 then x2 b2 minus sum 2 so that means then we need to evaluate the sum of a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus a23 x3 plus a22 multiply by x2 whole divided by a22 let's implement it in programming say we write a title solve system of equations using gauss seidel method for any number of variables clc and clear then we define a and b first we define capital l that is length of b we have uh, taken three variable case so capital l will be three let's define the initial values of uh, all x as zero so this uh, zeros one comma l will define a vector of uh, one row and l columns define n equal to input enter the number of iterations then we define a for loop that will run from one to n that is number of iterations display after string k iteration solutions are next we are assigning x to xp because in the program we will update the value of x next we define a for loop that will run from 1 to l now as discussed earlier first we define sum i equal to sum a i comma colon dot star x say i is equal to 1 then sum 1 equal to sum a i is 1 so first row colon that means all the columns 
basically we are considering first row of uh, a and we are multiplying it element wise that's why there is dot and star with x and we are defining this uh, command sum so it will take the sum of the three ai xi now here uh, an important thing to note is this capital sum is different and this small sum is different sum is an internal command of scilab and capital sum is the variable that we have defined you can give it any name here instead of this capital sum but this small sum is the standard command of scilab to calculate the sum of the terms within the bracket once we get the sum we can calculate the individual values of xi using this expression so we have evaluated xi then we can display but as we done in the previous program we need to check till when these iterations should continue otherwise if we enter say 100 iteration then honestly it will go till 100 iterations even if the result is same after say 5 or 10 iterations we are defining a variable var equal to find absolute value of x minus xp greater than 0 0.0001 this uh, 0 0.001 is our limit and uh, if our uh, solutions are varying less than this value then our iterations should stop this abs x minus xp will give a vector by subtracting x from xp and then find will compute the index of those elements which are greater than 0.0001 now if var is equal to null that means if there are no elements greater than 0.001 then we should break the loop so that means if there is any element in this vector absx minus xp in this difference vector is uh, greater than 0 0.001 then loop should not break and if uh, all the elements of this uh, difference vector abs x minus xp are less than 0 0.001 then this for loop should break finally and minimize it execute it save it go to the console enter number of iterations say 10 so these are the final solutions x11 x2 almost 3 and x3 4 this program is general that means if you want to use this program for four variables then you just need to change this a and b rest of the program will remain same it will automatically detect how many number of variables are there from this vector b so you can solve the system of any number of variables using this program. I hope you like this video, share it with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to subscribe our channel if you haven't done it yet.